Hey, and welcome back to a new video. Today, from Team Group from Computex 2025, in my hand, I have a prototype motherboard, again, that is using CAM2. Similar to last year, we see this memory standard prototypes on a couple of booths. Even though neither the memory manufacturers nor the mainboard manufacturers seem to make up their minds yet if they want to turn this into a mass product or not. That is, it's strange, but we're covering it anyway. There is T-Create written on it. And there are other products here from T-Create that I want to show you, especially an SSD that can just physically kill itself. Meet the Endorphi Arcs series, designed to offer great performance and cooling capabilities. With ultra mesh panels, room for up to eight fans and support for big radiators, the Arcs 700 and Arcs 500 keep even the hottest builds cool. The Arcs 700 fits latest top-of-the-line GPUs, massive coolers and long PSUs with ease. Need something smaller? The Arcs 500 brings the same airflow design first in a more compact size. Both offer clean cable management, USB-C connectivity and tool-free maintenance. ARGB or Stealth, you choose which style styles use your build and your style the best. This is a prime example of what I like about CAM2 as a concept. It just makes it look a lot different to what we are used to with the DIMMs. It just allows the cooling manufacturers or even the memory manufacturers to play around with different designs and cooling solutions, which is then different to what we normally see. Even though, at least at the current state, the CAM2 seems not to be superior over DIMM. That is something I guess we have to see how things develop in the next years, but I hope sincerely that it will make it to the market. The craziest product the team group is displaying is this self-destructing SSD. I first thought, okay, is it maybe just, you know, erasing the storage, but no, it is actually physically destroying it. I asked how they're doing it and they didn't want to go into much detail, but I think they might have to just run extra high voltage through the flash and thus destroy it because they definitely pointed out that it's not just erased that would mean you could somehow maybe also just recover the storage but that's not the case they said it's physically destroyed so that definitely has some kind of cia vibes to it but i think this will be limited to maybe a military use or something like that otherwise in our industry a button for erasing the browser history is probably more useful quick cut at this point because I honestly was interested in how this works and how exactly the CPU kills or erases itself. On the spec sheet there was listed that the Taiwan patent office number is M662727. So I just went ahead, went to the Taiwan office, translated with ChatGPT from Chinese to English and then there was a quite good description how this technology works. So it's a two-step erasing process. If you press the button short then the software will just do a normal erase process. But if you keep the button pressed for a longer period, there is a DC to DC voltage booster built in. They're not exactly stating what kind of voltage they're using, but I would assume the default voltage of this SSD is probably either 3.3 or 5 volts, and then it's probably boosting to something like 10, 15, 20 volts or even more. And that voltage would be just way too high for the flash storage to handle it for the flash memory and it would just kill it. It would just kill it by overvolting the memory and at that point, yeah, you would not be able to recover the storage. On this corner, Team Group is displaying CKD memory or CUDIM. That means that uh, these memory modules, they have a small extra AC that is supposed to help the memory modules being more stable at a higher frequency. That's also why it's running on Aero Lake. We see 64 gigabyte per module. That means that this is a total of 256 gigabytes. And I could just see it on here on the BIOS screen. It was showing 7,200 mega transfers of speed with 256 gigabytes. Yeah, here we can see it. Another product of the crazy category is this AIO that is supposed to triple cool NVMe SSDs. And I'm not quite sure in which system you would actually use that, but if you ever have the need of running maybe three Gen 5 NVMe SSDs all the time under load, that might be your cooling solution. And we already have seen something quite similar last year, which is very similar to this. And this is something I could imagine that somebody would use in the system if you don't have sufficient cooling for your SSD through the motherboard, for example. Then this would cool both at the same time, your CPU and your NVMe drive. 
They're also quite heavily engaged in the SSD business, so they're displaying multiple different Gen 5 SSDs. We have ME and MA series, which are supposed to be for laptops. Then we have GE, GZ and GA Pro. Those three are more for the consumer segment. The only difference on those three is the built-in controller, which will have different speeds, as you can see here, and thus also obviously a different price tag. What would be Computex 2025 without AI? And here we have another great AI cooling solution. It is the SSD with the so-called AI cooler. Now the question is, what the hell is that? They have this schematic right here, where on top you see some kind of casing, a fan underneath, a heat sink, then something with green and red, where I assume it's what they call thermoelectric cooling system design, which I would assume is a Peltier element, a tech. But the thing is, when I wanted to see what is actually going on there, and I took a look underneath the SSD, I saw there's just absolutely nothing. Now I don't want to interpret too much into this, because it could also just be a prototype or a concept, which then would make sense. What wouldn't make too much sense if, if it's really tech cool, because then you would just pump heat into it. If you would run a tech, then you would have to split the cooling in half, basically. You have, would have one piece that is cooling, one piece that is getting warm, so that would, wouldn't actually work. But it could be a concept, and at least it's saying that AI would automatically detect and adjust the cooling performance whatever that actually means. Now there might be some interesting background you should know. We are currently in the main hall of Computex and this year there was some extra regulation that only companies that do something related to AI can be in this hall. Now I can imagine a company like Team Group, which is probably not mainly doing AI components, they probably thought, so how can we get into this hall without actually doing AI products? So maybe this is just an extremely smart move of making it into the main hall. If that would be the case, not bad. To celebrate the year of the snake, a team group designed some snake skin styled DDR5 memory modules that unfortunately will not make it to the market, even though I think they look quite cool. And honestly, I would not have guessed that this is supposed to be snake skin. It's much more like a tech or like military tech camo style, which I think is at least something different, something interesting. Under the brand T-Create, Team Group also expands in a lot of different fields. For example, SSDs with built-in battery and built-in tracking function. So you could connect this with your Apple device and then use Apple Find My function to track it. If you ever lose it or if it's attached to something you want to keep track of. And I hope you enjoyed this video. That's the end from Team Group. Thanks for tuning in. Till next time. Bye-bye.